What up, everybody? It's Friday, 7.30 a.m. here on the East Coast of the United States. I'm about to go live and give you guys um, some Bitcoin analysis and look over some altcoins, some trades, see how everything is going in the market. Uh, there's a lot of interesting price action that I've noticed recently that um, I think we need to talk about because I know people are either getting really fearful of the market just dropping or just you know really bullish. Um, and the best way to be successful in markets like this, guys, is to just you know always stay um, emotionless, right? Uh, it's always your best bet because you then don't have um, too much in terms of uh, emotions at stake if you're right or you're wrong. Okay, trade the market as is, not how you want it to be or how you think it's going to be. Um, you know, a lot of our analysis in our crypto community is more often than not based on confirmations. Yeah, sometimes we'll take the you know probabilities of the trade breaking to the upside, but it's not willy nilly that you know we just buy randomly. Um, and sell randomly, okay? It's smart, calculated risk that we realize, okay, this might be what's necessary as a trade because the odds are in our favor in terms of technicals. You will never be 100% right um, on your technicals, and you will also never be right 100% on your trades. That I can guarantee you. Okay, doing this for a while, one thing I've learned is every trader comes into this market thinking that's an easy money maker. But remember the 90-90-90 rule from um, the equities market, which is 90% of the traders lose 90% of the money in less than 90 days. That's kind of a fact. I would say actually the percentage is a little bit higher. Um, in terms of how many traders lose their money and how much money is lost. Um, a lot of stories I've heard from friends or if you even just Google online, you'll see a lot of people talking about blowing up their entire accounts, okay, at least multiple times, meaning that they either start in the crypto market or BitMEX, you know, trading on Binance or Forex, and they've basically you know gone too high in terms of leverage or they doubled down on the wrong bets and they got their entire account just destroyed okay um, completely liquidated from 10,000 20,000 50,000 100,000 down to zero and guys th these these markets they have that much power to lure you in and show you that you know um, I guess appease to your gambling urges and they will clean you out all right so you have to understand you know how to properly manage your risk okay um, first thing is first right one thing I always talk about is how I size my positions okay position sizing um, is second to risk management all right um, so let me talk about position sizing okay so when I talk about my position sizes you can see right here this is how I base my positions okay I state that I have three percent of my capital in this trade so let's just say if my overall capital trading capital again I have different stacks right I have a short-term trading stack which is what I trade with right here and then I have a medium-term stack right there Okay, uh, medium term and long term sort of mixed together. Okay, and these are my open trades in medium um, and long so far. Um, and I have a bunch of other long trades too. Okay, so here's um, how I would break down the uh, position sizing. Okay, so say if you have 100K, all right, currently my position's right here. Okay, this is my short term stack, all right. I have $3,000 in BTC, okay? 8,000 in ETH, 3,000 in LTC, okay? 3,000 in BCH, okay? And 3,000 
in EOS, okay? If this is my position sizing, right? And say I lose three or say 10%, all right, on BTC and I close out my trade. What is 10% of 3,000? That's $300, okay? Say I gain 5% on ETH, okay? 5% of ETH right here is um, 4,000, or I mean 400, right? Okay? Say I lose another 10% on LTC, okay? And say I gain 1% on uh, BCH, okay? So that's 30. And over here, um, and say I lost 10% on EOS, okay? So these are my losses right there. And what did I say? I think I said I lost 5% uh, right here, right? Or gained 5%, okay? So this is a loss, this is a gain, this is a loss, this is a gain, and say this is a loss, okay? So I'm technically down negative 300, negative 600, 990, or actually negative 900, and $430, okay? So 900 minus 430, so I'm down negative 470, okay? That's actually how this would play out, okay? I would be down 470, and 470, okay, of, of 100,000, all right, is equal to, okay, 0.47%, okay, of my overall, 100k stack so i'm technically down i'm not saying that this is how much i'm down i think um over in this entire thing right here i'm probably up five or seven percent right now um, but i'm just saying that these are the examples of the figures so you have to be able to weigh this number what you're down against your overall trading stack all right because it is not fair for you to take any trade like this bigger than positions that are bigger than your appetite, your risk appetite, all right? And also, if you go all into one position or higher or lower into one position because you think that that's how you want to play it, listen, that's that's your prerogative, okay? You can do whatever you want, however you want it. I, I break down my positions in a certain way because I have a certain risk appetite for my capital, and I may also start off... Um, say 100 meters ahead of you because my overall capital and my overall gain for the um, month or the year or the past few years okay um, is significantly higher okay from the beginning of the year so far i'm up 300 and like 20 or 330 percent on my portfolio on my short-term trading stack so you cannot compare where you are in terms of the starting line to me because i might be a little bit ahead of you or you might be a little bit ahead of me right so you need to size accordingly and you also need to place your stops accordingly according to your risk so let me give you a perfect example okay I had a member asked me a question about fetch right so here's fetch okay fetch is um, we bought fetch somewhere around here I averaged down into 2700 yesterday's um, so doubled down basically and now fetch is not doing so well right it's been three rough days of selling, and I know everyone is freaking out, um, and that's okay. Listen, if we are to assume that fetch is in this one, two, three, four, five impulsive wave count, my stop for fetch is lower than this right here, okay, which is about 1,800 or so. If you cannot handle this kind of risk right here in fetch, where you cannot afford to buy over here and sell at you know 30 40 percent losses right here right because you did not position size properly or you didn't know that oh well i didn't know that i was supposed to put only x percent and you just went all in guys that's your that's your fault that's all up to you as always every choice every trigger you pull on a buy or sell is always going to be you okay
I bought into Fetch right here, all right, and I'm happy to say that I did. Then I averaged down right here, and I may even average down somewhere in this block right here, around 2200, all right, because I believe in this wave count right here, all right. I'm not going to let go of this position because this is also a bigger medium term position. And also, like I stated, right, Fetch is 7.5% of my um, uh, long term capital, okay, my long term and medium term capital. So if we take that same example of 100K, right, say I had another 100K in my uh, long term capital, right, then I'm risking $7,500, okay over here in this position and my stop from my average or let's just say from here okay is all the way down here deeper it's a it's a 44 percent drop and i know that's a steep drop but negative 44 percent okay so that's about you know i'm basically risking half my stack right here okay so about 3500 dollars is what i'm willing to risk okay and that's fine by me okay because of that 3500 loss all right the 3500 dollars that i will lose over my 100k is um about 3.5 percent okay 3.5 percent of my stack now i know that's a sizable amount but again i may be up much higher than you are in my medium term and long term trade so my risk tolerance and my risk appetite is a lot different than yours Okay, so this is why you need to understand how to properly manage your risk according to your wins and losses, according to how you are uh, prone to emotional lapses, whether you are panicking because the price is down 10%, 20%, 30%. Okay, I'm not going to flinch on this because I know my stop is down here. I really don't care if I do get you know stopped out because, hey, I did the technicals the way I should. Um, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, all right? But again, I have other trades in play too, all right? I have LTC. My entry is 128, okay? LTC is 12.5%, um, meaning if we took that same example, um, it's a $12,500 trade, okay? Um, so if that's a $12,500 trade, let's see where LTC is. I think LTC is close to its break even. So I might even, you know, double down on that too. Oh, it's at 131. So LTC is at 131, right? So if LTC, I got in at 128, right? And I took a $12,500 trade, okay? And it is currently up, let's see, from 128, somewhere, let's just say right there. Uh, we're up about 3%, right? So 3%, okay, times 3%, okay? So let's do that, 12,500 times, 12,500 times three. So I'm up $375 on it, okay? Over here, I was up a nice, you know, 10% or so, okay? So that was about, um, 12,000 or uh, 1,250, maybe like 1,500 bucks or so, right? Right up here. But I didn't choose to sell because I want to double down on LTC when it pulls back. Okay. And again, LTC is also a medium term trade for me, right? Just because it's come down a little bit doesn't scare me out of this trade because I'm going for something different in this trade. I'm going for that um, August LTC halving event. Okay. And I will probably be selling, selling off in late June or mid July. All right. And that I expect to cover a lot of, you know, um, a lot of ground, maybe in the 170s, 180s, somewhere up here. And that I'll be up a nice, you know, 30, 40%, even if I'm up 20%, that'll then make up if I break out or I'm sorry, if I get stopped out on this trade right here, my LTC trade will cover for it. And that's fine. Sometimes you just have to be able to risk, you know, one trade against the other. Okay. So I'm sorry I went off on a on a rant, but it was it was important for me to explain because I know that trading can be hard, guys. I know that you know um, these are the lessons that are not taught to you. What I just went over. What you often see in most videos is, hey, you know, I'm gonna buy here and sell here. Um, 
you know, buy XYZ coin because it has, you know, 100x um, potential or whatever. Um, but, but I'm telling you that risk management and position sizing will save your ass um, no matter what trade you take, okay? If you understand that, I promise you, you will come out a winner in this market. I guarantee it, okay? But you have to learn those fundamental skills, all right? Um, with that being said, please do come join CryptoSomniac. Uh, this is our wonderful community. Uh, lots of conversations and chatter happening here. Um, as you can see, people are busy um, just talking about whatever's going on in the market. If you want an active community that you know, talks about um, what's going on where, uh, what alts they're into, um, you know, we even have margin trading channel, a bot trading channel. We have short-term setups, medium-term setups. Mm -hmm a very um, active Bitcoin analysis channel where I put up videos and multiple updates every single day. All right. So with that being said, let me get to my Bitcoin analysis here first. I know there's a lot of action happening. So let me talk about that. Okay. First things first, still in the middle of this trading range. Now, actually, we're hitting the top of the trading range. Okay. Currently on um, Bitstamp prices, that's somewhere around uh, close to $8,300. Breaking above this level is going to be critical if we want to even challenge these highs right here around 8800 and the 9000 marker over here. But as you can see, we haven't quite broken that. Okay. Another thing that I'm actually seeing in this area is something like this. Okay. Uh, not a big fan of it right now. Um, let's see where it went. Let's see. Actually, maybe it's a little bit more visible right here. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing actually, guys, is somewhat of a a rising wedge, as you can see. All right. Um, and it's actually grinding up against this previous ascending channel that we had over here. So this rising wedge, again, if it does fall out, okay, it'll probably come back down to this level again, which is 8,100, maybe 8,000 flat and then potentially bounce back up, okay? So if you are looking to go long, this might not be the spot because you're in a very crucial area where price might not um, break through right now. It might actually have a higher chance and a probability to break down because rising wedges, okay, the way their anatomy is, is price is first volatile, okay? and price tightens up as it gets closer and closer to resistance, okay? And eventually what happens is there's a bit too much supply at first and prices get sent down, all right? And then maybe if the bulls do pick up on this support right here, maybe the prices will you know, rally back up, okay? But for the most part, rising wedges are um, lean a little bit more bearish in terms of falling the price falling out, okay? So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, so with that being said, um, price is currently just grinding around the $8,300 area. And as I've stated before, that when price does keep moving sideways right near resistance, it has a higher probability to break up. I think that probability is still fairly high that this will break out. Um, but maybe first we need to pull back just a little bit from the rising wedge, fall out, and then push back up. Okay. So that might be another opportunity if you want to buy the quick dip right here, you may get one. All right. Um, let me see over here what's happening. Okay. So here on the uh, on the daily chart, okay, we still have this big sort of bull flag still playing out, in my opinion. Um, and if this is the size of the bull flag, and we break out from I don't know, say over here, right? Our target then becomes somewhere around this area, which is the 12,700 marker, okay? Um, another thing to point out, folks, is something like this, okay? If we sort of, uh, let me pick a different chart, not that one. There. Yeah, I think this is a good chart, okay? So here's something really interesting, all right? In all of 2018, all right, if you ignore this top right here, and we simply just pick 
you know, this big trading range right here, all right? This right here, okay? Where price touched, you know, around this region. If you go to different exchanges, price definitely touched down here around 5,800 or so. All we're really doing right now is we're hitting the top of this, you know, EQ right here. Hang on, let me shift this down just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up just to show you guys what I mean. Okay, you can see that price is hitting the EQ of this large range right here. Okay, um, and it's of no surprise that we're just grinding up against this area because there's probably a lot of sellers in this area too, or there's actually a lot of accumulation happening before the next big push to the top of this trading range. Okay, which will be somewhere around 11.4 and 11. Eight. Again, depending on which exchange you're on, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the next push will first take us to I don't know the the lower like nine thousand six hundred top right here, and then potentially the eleven four um, or maybe blow off the top twelve k. All right, and then this is where things are going to get interesting. Okay, because then you will be right at that big trading range, and if you fall. Your next big support is probably going to be this eight thousand dollar area. So from twelve k to eight thousand, that's that's like a 25, 30 percent drop right there. Okay, so I still am fairly confident that you know BTC is doing its best to push through uh, towards the top of this trading range because we went over this in yesterday's video, right? Um, if we look on the daily chart, something that we've utilized often is the 21 and 30 EMA. The 21 is in uh, the red right here, okay? And the 30 is um, in the pink right there. Through this entire run from, I would say right here, even March and April, you can see every time we've come to the 21 EMA, we've bounced off it successfully, okay? The last few days we spent you know, beneath it, but we close right above the bounce of the 30 EMA and then we bounce off it successfully. So this is now two or three days of positive bullish movement that we've spent above the 21 EMA, All right? So this is a successful bounce in my opinion. And the next, you know, bounce beyond this is usually going to target that previous high, all right? Which is around $8,700, $8,800. Even on the weekly, okay, even on the weekly, if we turn off this, uh, 30 EMA, the 21 has still been very useful through this entire bull run in 2016. As you can see right here, January 2016 bounce, right? Over here, August 2016 bounced. Over here, January 2017 bounce, bounce, right there, bounce, bounce. Over here, not so much. Over here, we bounced a little bit and then we broke through. And then it became resistance, resistance, resistance even more resistance, even more resistance. Now that we finally broken through, here's the thing. At some point, this 21 EMA will have to be touched um, on the way down, okay? Uh, because usually, you know, if you are in a bull run, uh, you want to come down to the 21 weeks um, EMA and then bounce off it, okay? So this is where things are gonna get really interesting um, on the 21 week moving average. I think the 21 week actually coordinates with the 100 moving average on the daily, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around that same area. Let's turn it on and see where it is. Yeah, it's right around there, right? 58, $5,700. Um, over here we see the 200, EMA right down there, uh, right around uh, 6,100, so about the same, okay? So for the most part, that will be the region we may want to look at when prices do look uh, excessively weak on the weekly time frame or the daily time frame. For now, they look like they're still grinding up on the, on the uh, smaller time frames like the four hour and the daily chart, okay? Um, if prices do come down like I stated, it might come down to 8,100, maybe 8,000 uh, flat, and then push back up, okay? Uh, let me check out the volume real quick. Where's the volume over here? There's the volume. Okay, so 
here's another thing. All right, let me turn it on here so I can explain this to you a little bit better. Um, you expect volume to get a little bit more flat right here because you're consolidating right near resistance, okay? The explosion in volume needs to be higher on the breakout, okay? So you need to have a bar like this, like this one right here, as you can see, going through this resistance. When you see a bar like that, that's a big breakout volume and that's a confirmed break. If you see a small bar like this and you slowly break through it, I would say that's a fake out and you're probably gonna come back in. So definitely turn on your volume um, indicator, guys, and keep an eye on this break, okay? Let's go over um, BNB, because I know everyone's talking about it. I have no idea what's going on with BNB. Um, it looks like it hit a very critical resistance right here around, um, it's, I think it's basically double topped. Yeah, this is basically a double top right here, okay? So what it did was it double topped right there, okay? Um, right around 35, all right? So now people are asking, okay, well, does this mean that you know this is gonna go straight down? Okay, so here's a good idea about how to take care of a double top. And the double tops are only valid once these candle um, swings right here are broken. So if you want to get into BNB, your perfect opportunity is if the next day or two comes down to this level and your stop should be right under, okay? So if 29.14 is your buy, all right, your stop should be down here, maybe like a little bit lower, okay? Right around that area, okay? This, this way you don't get wicked, right? All right, so from here down, your stop is about four and a half, five percent deep, okay? But if you're aiming back up, right, your, your target from this buy to at least this double top again is 21 or 22 percent gain. That's about a um, four R trade, meaning that you're risking 5% for about a 20% gain. So your risk to reward ratio is about you know, four R. That's a pretty good trade in my opinion. I'm not advising you to buy or sell, but I'm saying that if you don't see BNB breaking this double top right here around uh, 29 or so, uh, it may go back up at the very least towards 35 right here, which is where the double top is. Or if it breaks down, you know, you're risking 5% for a 20% gain. Um, and, and beyond that, if it does break up higher, my next targets are still my FIBs, you know, this 37 marker and then this 45, so even higher targets. Um, again, you do your thing and, you know, figure out how to go about not buying or selling, but this is just the way I would look at it. All right, here's uh, Ether, okay, it's uh, a shitty chart. Here is Ether um, grinding its way also near uh, resistance right here around this, I, I would say low two, 260s, you know, mid 260s right here. Um, I don't see anything uh, too, too worrisome about Ether. It's really just this sort of bull flag I think it's making and then it should pop up in a way soon. Um, Unfortunately, because BTC is pulling back a little bit, Ether and most of the alts are always, you know, far more susceptible to falling even harder. So it's of no surprise that Ether is doing the same thing right now. Um, at some point, I do expect, uh, I do expect, um, you know, prices to uh, uh, consolidate a little bit in this area right here. Okay, why? Because this is where we had this. Um, inverse head and shoulders right there, right there, okay? Remember, inverse head and shoulders are bullish patterns. Once they do break through the neckline, the target then becomes the size of the head. So from here, 227 to about 249, so that's about $25 move. So from here on up, that becomes somewhere around 275 as the target of the inverse head and shoulders, okay? So at the very least, if you do buy this pullback, your target could be 274, 275, all right? Okay, um, Scott Miller says, my eyes burn from 1996 resolution. I'm so sorry, man. I don't know what to do. I'm, I've been trying to uh, figure out ways to stream in higher quality. If you guys have any suggestions, please do let me know. 
I really don't know, to be honest. Um, but I'm just doing my best to you know, go live every day because I know it helps just having uh, live analysis be done. Um, uh, I don't know what the BNB uh, breaking down, uh, or I'm sorry, BNB news is, um, but let me, let me tell you guys one more thing, okay? When you're in a bull market, right, at least in what seems to be a semi-good bull market um, for the last five, six months, bad news does not you know destroy your stock all right and when you're in a bear market good news does not um, shift the market into bull mode okay that's just that's just how it is all right um, oftentimes I mean unless it's truly devastating and the company is going bankrupt that's a different story but when it comes to you know prices just moving on up and some bad news comes out prices will tank recover sharply and then just continue on their trajectory all right um, I promise you you know if BNB doesn't have some devastating news I am almost certain that that dip will get bought up come to me and let me know if I was right because I promise you that around this 29 to 30 dollar area is where there's going to be a lot of you know bulls sitting and they will drive the prices even higher okay even higher towards new highs like 38 40 45 dollars okay um, i'm fairly confident about that um, but again i haven't seen the news so i can't definitively say all right um let's see how ltc is doing ltc has been one of my favorites and i'm going to be doubling down here keep an eye on this level guys um so you see this parallel channel right the parallel channel moves like this like that okay um, if LTC were to fall all right say today itself or tomorrow okay if it falls today straight down in a deep red candle it may bounce right here around 113 if it falls over the next few days all right over here say the end of June or something all right it'll be 130 okay this is when when the price comes to the bottom of this channel right here i will probably be doubling down on my bet okay and that's for my medium term position right here as you can see i have 12 and a half percent capital allocated to that ethereum i have five percent i'll also be doubling down on ethereum but i need to see strength beyond um 280 285 to do that fetch uh i'll probably double down somewhere around um 2000 maybe um on this one maybe add two and a half percent more again this is what i'm doing not investment advice for you by any means um other than that i think uh that covers the most major coins i'll go over um i'm sorry xrp real quick let's see how the xrp army is doing um hmm xrp doesn't look good so this is also your sort of a double top right here if this ascending triangle right here was going to break um, to the upside that would have been a very positive sign but now xrp has been selling off for about a good week xrp to me just looks so weak um i really don't feel like touching it unless like i catch you know a candle at the bottom of critical support like this um, which i think i did somewhere around here because it was the 618 um, fib level in the middle of may and I got out with you know, maybe like two, three percent gain. Um, so that's really the way you want to trade this. Stop going for you know XRP to like five dollars or ten dollars, guys. Trade the market as is, not how you see it. Okay. I would not be surprised if XRP drops back towards critical support, which is around forty-two hundred satoshis. Um, beyond that, if it falls further, I mean, good luck because I don't see anything in the way until maybe. I don't know, maybe down here, 14, 1500 Satoshis. That's a steep drop from where it is right now, all right? So if you're prepared to lose that much, um, I guess, you know, uh, good luck to you. But it, I guess it could very well, you know, print maybe a double bottom like this over here, like a W bottom. Um, I do because when you do print double bottom, you at least want to see the first you know sign of strength from the first bottom a little bit higher maybe somewhere up here and if it came down again then i wouldn't be surprised um 
but for the most part this is just a weak bounce you know this was two days of movement and then 12 days of selling you know three or four days or five six days of movement and you know eight or nine days of selling so the sellers by far control um, XRP um, than the bulls do all right so please do be careful about that one let's see what else we need to go over um, <laughs> I think that covers most of it uh, let's look at the long-term chart real quick on BTC let's see okay I'm gonna go back out on the weekly here here's the weekly chart um, we are successfully climbing o over the uh, monthly and weekly pivot right here very positive sign in my opinion um, if we happen to close above it which is two days from now basically um, two days and 12 hours from now okay if we happen to close as is if price just moves sideways all of today all of tomorrow all of sunday um this is a, still a positive sign but if we close under then you best be sure that we may have more downside because closing two weeks under this monthly and weekly pivot will signify that we are unable to close above some critical levels on price action um, and more than likely we may go down back towards uh, 7600 which is our first stop right here and then maybe even deeper towards 72 to 6900 okay um, so this is going to be a very critical juncture for Bitcoin unless it explodes over the next few hours um, which I hope it does you know I'm thinking that this rising wedge will break down to 8100 and then rip on through all right so those are my thoughts I went over risk management and position sizing um, I went over my medium-term calls, my short-term positions. I went over Ethereum and Litecoin and BNB and XRP. Um, if you do enjoy this analysis, guys, do give me a thumbs up it, you know, or leave me a comment. It helps um, bring my videos, our community videos, to the top when people are searching. And that's how we get members and we pay for our analysts and pay for the service to stay alive. All right? Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful Friday. Take care. Cheers.